All right, welcome back to part six of this series. Uh, in this part, we are gonna cover <coughs> the radioactive emissions or radioactive decay equations. So we studied three different types of decay, alpha decay, beta decay, and gamma decay. Some radioactive isotopes emit alpha radiations, some emit beta radiations, and some emit gamma radiations. So we can map that process um, using diagrams, or we can use nucleide notation and nuclear uh, re equations to actually represent what is happening during the decay. So let's just first tackle alpha decay. Now during alpha decay, <coughs> a nucleus is emitting an alpha particle, right? And what is an alpha particle? Well, it's two protons and two neutrons. So basically, from inside that nucleus, two protons and two neutrons are being removed. So if you take radium-226 as an example. It emits an alpha particle and it turns into radon-222. So if you look at the diagram, the nucleus on the left is radium-226. This is the parent or the original nucleus. Now it has 88 protons and 138 neutrons, right? And when an alpha particle is emitted, which means two protons and two neutrons are emitted from the nucleus, how many protons would it be left with? Well, 88 minus 2 is 86, so it will be left with 86 protons, and it will be left with 138 minus 2, that is 136 neutrons. So, how can we represent that as an equation? Well, it's basically just about the nuclear notation. So there were 88 protons to begin with and now there are 86 so the new element has the proton number 86 two less than the original number right and where did the two protons go they are part of the alpha particle now now the top number remember is not the number of neutrons this is something we have to be careful with the top number is neutrons plus protons which is the mass number so in total, there were 226 nucleons, uh, 88 plus 138, 226 uh, six nucleons in radium. And when two protons and two neutrons, which is a total of four nucleons, were emitted as a part of alpha particle, then the new number for the daughter nuclei will be 226 minus 4, which is 222, right? Now there is some uh, a few things to notice about alpha decay. You can see that the numbers, the top numbers and the bottom numbers on either side uh, add up to be the same. So for example, if you look at the bottom numbers, the number on the left is 88, whereas if we add the bottom numbers on the right, 86 plus 2, that also turns out to be 88. So that means that charge is conserved in the equation or you can say that the proton number is conserved in the equation, right? Then, what else can we say? We can say that the top numbers are also the same on either side, 226 on the left hand side, and 222 plus four is also 226. So the nucleon, the total number of nucleons, which is neutrons plus protons, is also conserved in the equation. Another thing to notice is that during alpha decay, a new element will always be formed. Since the atomic number or the proton number has changed and each element has its own unique atomic number, therefore we have a new element now. We had radium before and now we have radon. So this was alpha decay. Now let's move on to beta decay. Now just remember, beta was just an electron, a negatively charged electron. But think about how could an electron come out of the nucleus? Because we have already studied that these radiations come out of the nucleus. But from the structure of the atom, we know that electrons are not part of the nucleus. So where is the electron coming from? Well, the process basically happens in stages. So what happens inside the nucleus, the unstable nucleus, is that there is a neutron that turns into a proton, right? So out of nothing, a positive charge has been created and <clears throat> in physics it is basically impossible <clears throat> to have a charge not conserved charge will always be conserved so if we had 
zero charge in the form of a neutron and all of a sudden you have a proton being produced then something else must happen to conserve that charge so therefore when the neutron turns into a proton an electron is also formed it's a new electron that has just formed that comes out of the nucleus this electron is what we call a beta particle so let's take a look at it in the form of the diagram uh, so we have for this example iodine 131 and it emits a beta radiation a beta particle to become xenon 131 so iodine has 53 protons and 78 neutrons now when this particular neutron has now turned into a proton we have now one more proton in the new nucleus uh, compared to the previous one so previously there were 53 protons and now we have 54 because a nucleus has turned a neutron has turned into a proton whereas the number of neutrons which were 78 will now be one less than before because that neutron has turned into a proton so we have 78 minus 1 77 neutrons and this right here is your electron or the beta particle that has been emitted from inside the nucleus now what has happened to the proton number let's look at the equation pretty straightforward the proton number was 53 to begin with so now there's one more proton so it will be 54 and where uh, is that uh, one the, that increase of one has to be conserved obviously because we say charge is conserved so if there is a positive 53 on the left hand side then it should also turn out to be 53 on the right hand side so we write a minus one which is the charge on an electron or the beta particle on the right hand side so you can see the bottom number again are conserved 54 minus 1 turns out to be 53 so the number the bottom number is both the same on the left hand side and the right hand side now what do you think should happen to the atomic uh, the uh, the mass number the mass number is the total number of protons and neutrons now the important thing to notice here is that the total number of nucleons has not changed why because a neutron turned itself into a proton so one neutron has decreased but one proton has increased so the total number of particles inside the nucleus is still the same therefore the mass number which was 131 before is still the same and therefore we have a zero on top of the beta and you can see the top number which is the mass number has also been conserved in this equation now again you will see that a new element has formed as atomic number has changed again from 53 to 54 so whenever atomic number will change we know that a new element will be formed so in beta decay or to be uh, more accurate beta minus decay uh, a new element will always be formed now let's move on to gamma emissions now with gamma emissions uh, there is nothing too complicated you don't have to remember any equations um, some isotopes when they emit alpha or beta radiations they're still in an excited state so they still have some excess energy and they're still slightly unstable what they do is that the protons and neutrons inside the nucleus rearrange themselves and as a result they lose some energy and this energy is emitted in the as a burst of gamma radiation this energy turn, uh, comes out in the form of gamma radiations now gamma radiations are waves and they're not particles so no pro number of protons or neutrons inside the nucleus have changed they've just rearranged themselves into a more stable arrangement therefore there is no change of atomic number or mass number and there will be no equations that you will need to remember for this particular uh, radioactive decay so that's it for alpha beta and gamma decay just to summarize in alpha decay you will always let's revise this once so in alpha decay proton number or the atomic number always decreases by 2 and mass number always decreases by 4 whereas in beta decay let's take a look at the equation the atomic number which is the proton number always increases by 1 
it's always increases by one whereas the mass number does not change so there is no change in mass number and in gamma decay we have no changes to any of these numbers that's it for this video and i'll see you in the next one